Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to those who have recently subscribed to the channel and joined as well. Very good to have you aboard. Just thought I'd give a quick update as to how I'm going with Project Heavy. So Project Heavy, I started this for those who are not quite familiar with this back in December of last year. And this is basically my very own creation. It's a half track vehicle, armored car. It's based loosely off the German A7V uh, World War One tank. And yeah, I know it looks like a bit of a box on wheels, but hey, that's what tanks in the World War One era used to look like. So there. <laughs> anyway, so this is basically a bit of an update video, an update diary. This is diary number three. So if you haven't checked out the first two diaries, then I definitely rec uh, recommend that you do that. I have a card up on the screen at the moment at the top right. Hopefully you can see that to uh, link to diary number two to check that out. Um, as you would have seen in the beginning of the video, this is actually a prototypical vehicle at the moment, which is actually driving around, okay? So I've actually got the RC equipment fitted. I've 3D printed a lot of this vehicle out already. And design-wise, it's more or less complete in Fusion 360. Um, so the 3D model is more or less complete. You can see I've moved to a turret design there. Haven't quite printed out, you know, the turret and things like that, but getting there slowly. I've got the hatches modeled. I've got a bit of a cooling fan system. I'm just showing the interior here. Um, I've, I've made a lot of uh, sort of progress um, since the last update. So yeah, that's, that's basically how the vehicle stands at the moment. Design-wise, it's more or less complete. So I'm gonna try and devote the majority of this video to talking about the 3D printing uh, challenges that I've come across and things of that nature. So um, just showing the interior a little bit here. I haven't printed a lot of the interior out just yet because I'm just trying to finalize the uh, 3D print materials, I guess, for this vehicle. So um, you can see here the like all the floorboards and the, the driver's steering wheel, the control stand, the driver's seat. Um, you can see the cooling fan will actually blow down onto the ESC mount there that I've got highlighted in blue. But anyway, um, let's let's talk about the 3D print material a little bit more. Okay, so initially it was all uh, PLA plus, right? So I've I've prototyped this vehicle, um, and basically the whole body section and chassis, except for the top sections, um, all in PLA plus. So this is where I was at um, only several weeks ago now, actually. And so everything was all hunky-dory, everything was, was looking good. PLA Plus, yay, easy to print, good stuff. The actual material itself, PLA Plus, is very easy to print with, by the way. You can see here, here's the sections that I was printing in PLA Plus on the Creality uh, 3 and the V2, and it went without a hitch, no problems at all, nice low temperatures, nothing too crazy, uh, no enclosure, anything like that. Everything uh, turned out good, until, of course, you get some PLA Plus and you put it in the sun okay so you put it under that uv exposure for just a few hours and look at this look at um, hopefully you can see this you can see the amount that it's warped basically and towards the top of the print um, everything's just gone skew with and it's just kind of angled itself and it's really really not looking happy at all so obviously at this point i was like okay well pla plus it's obviously not made for heavy uv exposure and this vehicle of course i'm gonna have to run it outside well i want to be able to run this thing outside it's a rc vehicle of course um, and to be honest this whole 3d printing game if i'm going to play it properly i really don't want to have to worry that my prints are going to melt as such so i'm happy to keep pla plus as my prototype filament so at that point i guess it was moving on to okay what other filaments do i have available to me that i can print uh, low cost, um, accessible for my printer without causing too much trouble and that won't melt in the sun. So what have we got? Well, it was actually at this point that I moved on to a filament or material called PETG. Okay, so this is the stuff that they make those plastic bottles out of, those soda bottles and things like that, those water bottles. They actually hold up really well in the sun as you've probably experienced with those bottles and things like that. So PETG was actually quite good and I was, I was really happy with that as a material. Um, it was somewhat easy to print as well, probably a little bit more of a increase in uh, skill level required than uh, PLA Plus. Uh, kind of have to slow the print down with PETG and can't bring the nozzle too close to the bed either. So you have to kind of keep the nozzle a little bit higher up so that you don't squish the print as it were. 
So yes, now it's a matter of reprinting all the gearbox housings and the motor mounts and things like that, what you can see on the screen in PETG because PETG is a lot more UV resistant, okay? And uh, in my testing as well, as you can see here, um, I've been leaving a PETG piece in the sun. I've been trying just painting, priming and seeing how they go as well. And so far, very, very impressed with how PETG is going. Uh, leaving motor mounts in the sun, no problem at all. If you compare that to how the PLA Plus prototype parts look, they've just completely warped out and they're unusable. So yeah, the moral of the story obviously is PLA or PLA Plus, whatever it is, if it's PLA, it's no good for outdoors use. So prototyping only, okay. So with that in mind, I started to print out more parts, I guess, for the vehicle. Um, and this time in PETG. So the top plates, as you can see here, that nice little sheen, um, that's all in PETG, what you're seeing here across the top of the vehicle. So as it stands at the moment, this is what's currently printed in, in PETG for this vehicle, just highlighted in blue there. Okay, so what's next? Basically, this is how the vehicle stands at this point in time. There's a mixture of PETG on there across the top. The entry door and things like that is PETG as well. Uh, but all the underpinnings basically are still in PLA Plus. So I've got a lot of printing ahead of me now to redo this vehicle in PETG. And yeah, so that's the way forward, I guess, is to use PETG for a lot of the parts. And I've sun tested a lot of those as well. And they seem to be holding up quite well. So those big parts, those, you know, the big uh, body sections in PETG seem to be holding up. As I mentioned before, I've been doing a lot of testing um, of PETG in the sun. The thing with PETG though is it's very hard to sand and it really doesn't like paint either. So that's the consideration that I've got a um, bit of a disadvantage towards PETG. Uh, otherwise, it seems to be holding up in the sun just fine, at least for these bigger parts. And just when you thought everything was safe, I'm going to burst the PETG bubble. This, what we're looking at right here, is an issue which I've found with PETG. This is a, a chassis rail which I've left in the sun. Now, I'm not too sure why this is actually deformed like this, but it has. Um, its brother, which is the other chassis rail, which was on the other side, no problem at all but this one chose to uh to sort of warp it's very very difficult to see but it is it is uh, uh visible there if you look towards the right hand side of the screen there you can see there's a slight sort of bow and the beam kind of is bent a little bit it's only very slight but it's enough for me to go oh man pet g it seems depending on the design and maybe even the color of the part this is 100 percent infill doesn't seem to make a big difference um, it's just not impervious to UV. It's, it's funny because you look it up, you go, can PETG be used outside? You get all these articles saying um, PETG and ASA are filaments for outdoor use. Okay, that, that may be the case. Uh, it says here, you know, in the long run, PETG can offer better results in the direct sun. Um, it can withstand UV radiation much better than other filaments such as PLA and ABS. However, in some of the videos I've seen, ABS prints hold up way better than PETG when subjected to very long extended UV exposure, okay? So that's kind of made me think, hmm, PETG in some instances at least, when it comes to some types of designs and maybe even the colors, potentially even the infill amounts, um, is quite susceptible to UV damage as well. Um, other parts in PETG, absolutely fine. They can sit out there in the sun, they don't seem to be affected at all. But parts that are quite thin, it seems, and have lower infill levels, it seems at least from my R&D, my own backyard R&D as it were, um, have been shown to be a little bit more susceptible than other PETG parts to damage. Anyway, so where am I going with this? ASA, everyone. I am actually moving on to ASA as of about 24 hours ago actually, so it's only very new. Um, ASA, basically really quick rundown, don't want to take up too much more time, but basically ASA is everything that ABS could never be and even more. So um, ASA is like basically industrial grade, similar to how ABS is industrial grade as well. Um, both ABS and ASA are toxic, okay, so moving to ASA from PETG and PLA, I'm now moving into the toxic realm. So basically, I'm um, looking at danger, Mr. Robinson, basically, uh, when you print. So um, ASA is basically impervious to UV from what I read. It's basically, it's one of those automotive grade 
uh, plastics uh, industry uses it heavily it's basically an outdoor recommended print okay um, I've done a few test prints so far with ASA some C channels you can see there on the screen um, it basically blows PLA out of the water pet G basically can't really hold a candle to it either I love the finish that you get with ASA as well and it's definitely more of a challenge to print okay so um, yeah you do need a bit of an enclosure for your printer ideally um, especially for larger parts and don't laugh too hard but this is my print enclosure for the moment uh, it is very temporary um, it does the job for the moment that's the main thing I will be sprucing it up a little bit more in the future um, yeah the temperatures as well you need to sort of play with a little bit I have managed to get it printing on my stock uh, Creality printer um, keeping in mind I do have that PF uh, PTFE tubing still there so I've got to work within the temperature constraints of that if anyone's interested in my print settings for ASA on the Creality please do let me know in the comments I'm happy to share that information with you but yes ASA is the way forward at least for some of these parts on this RC vehicle it may well end up that I move to ASA completely for 100% of the vehicle but definitely out with PLA so it's going to be a pet G and ASA kind of mix we'll basically go from there so yes thank you so much for watching and uh, this will probably be my last build diary update actually for this vehicle I think I've got everything pretty much down pat here so the next time you do see this vehicle it'll most likely be finished and running apologies I haven't been putting out too many gaming videos of late I've kind of just been sucked into this whole um, this whole project this project heavy but for those of you who have been on this channel for some time you'll know that this channel features a wide range of uh, pursuits uh, not only gaming but also scale models and 3d printing and all that other cool stuff as well so try and find the balance anyway uh, if you're interested in more of this kind of content please do check out my socials in the description of this video um, I do post on there quite regularly uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this. And I will see you, or not, in the next one.